Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Dr. Stone episode 9 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this TV show really are. What Senku is talking about here is an electromagnet. An electromagnet is named as such because a magnetic field was induced through an electric current. You have the iron rod, which is the core, and you have a copper coil that's around the iron rod. And what you have to do is send a current through the copper, and that electric current will induce a magnetic field around the iron, creating an electromagnet. Senku doesn't have a generator to actually send the electric current through the copper coil, so what he plans on doing is moving it to a high elevation where it's hopefully struck by lightning, and uh, all the electricity and the lightning is going to go through the coil, and that's what's going to induce the electromagnet. Normally, you would cover or use the lacquer to insulate the copper coil instead of the metal rod, but I'm not really sure that would matter though, because you need the copper coil to be insulated for this to actually work, but I guess if he's insulating the metal rod instead, I don't see why not that would work. I'm just, the way that I've always seen it is that a copper coil was always the thing that was insulated. I never, I never actually tried to insulate the metal, like the iron rod instead. That is, for one, really cool. Um, it's a long shot in that of itself. I do believe that if the lightning did hit it, it would certainly go through the copper coil. Speaking of the copper coil, there is, like, nothing. I mean, you need way more turns, like, to cover that, like, iron rod than what he has here. Like, the, the more turns you have, the more intense of a um, magnetic field you can generate when you put electric current through the copper coil. And there's, there's really not much, but I guess if you're... Because the lightning has so much electrical energy and the current level is just out of this world. So I guess like if you have such a huge power source, you don't need as many turns. Uh, but like the way that I've always like done it myself is that you have like you pretty much cover the entire like iron rod in the copper coil to the point where you can't see the iron anymore. And you just need to generate a little bit of current and that will create the magnetic field. The inherent problem with this is that once the current stops flowing through the copper coil that's surrounding the iron rod, your electromagnet is dead. Like, it'll only be magnetic for a few seconds. Like, you need a constant flow of current through that copper to actually continue the use of your electromagnet. And once the lightning dissipates, there's no more current. So I don't know, like, what he plans on doing with that, but it would only be magnetic for a few seconds. It wouldn't stay magnetic though once the current flow through the copper stopped. Unless they made a lodestone. The only scenario where this thing stays magnetic is if they created a lodestone. And so a, a lodestone is a naturally occurring rock <laughs> that is magnetic in that of itself. Like you don't have to actually induce a current or anything like the rock itself is magnetic. Lodestones are very rare and no one's actually sh exactly sure how they came to be. But one of the residing hypothesis is that lightning struck magnetite on earth and all of like pretty much what happened here is like all of the current in the lightning when it struck the magnetite it induced enough of a magnetic field that the magnetic field stayed forever and the heat from the lightning bolt actually like melted together little chunks of magnetite so you have one rock with a very very intense magnetic field that will never go away. The discovery of lodestones is actually how the first compass was made. 
And that's what led to a lot of like the electricity and magnetism studies that we have today is that they're just natural magnets. But I don't, I mean, they were talking about the experiment that the um, one engineer or one scientist from NASA was doing and how he artificially created lodestones. And I, I'm not familiar enough to actually tell you how legit that is, but it seems like if lodestones were naturally created when lightning struck magnetite, then this would work because lightning just struck an electromagnet and it was powerful enough that the magnetic field maintained itself. Uh, but I just, I'm not familiar enough with the experiment to tell you if that was like actually legit or not. That was the coolest, I, that was really, this is my favorite Dr. Stone episode. I mean, that was something amazing. I really am glad that you guys told me to watch this show because I love it. It's so much fun and the science is pretty accurate. I mean, like there hasn't been like a large glaring sort of like anything that's wrong. Just up till this point, everything that we've seen I mean, as far as I can tell you, is real, legit, and accurate. If you want to see more Dr. Stone, just go ahead and throw that in the comments. I will get to it as soon as I can. Anything else you guys want me to watch, like movies or TV shows-wise, let me know too so I can check those out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and found some value in it. Stay fresh and stay golden.